Hi everybody, my name is Griffin Zillot Kale, and I'm a developer advocate here at Dolby.io. Today I'm going to get started teaching you all how to use the Dolby.io streaming platform's REST API, which is a very cool tool if you want to do things like be able to automatically generate publishing tokens for you to distribute new streams at will. For those of you who don't know, a REST API is a tool that allows you to interact with another product without actually needing to pull their source code directly, where you're able to interface with it and be able to create commands that will trigger their code or their platform at will. For this, you can use any language that you want as long as you're able to make an HTTP request using it. But for this example, I'm going to be using Postman, which is a really cool platform that allows you to more easily visualize these, similar to a curl command, but actually being able to see and modify the data. Okay, so to begin, the first thing we're going to need is a Dolby.io account, which you can create for free right now, where you'll be able to get $50 of free credit to play around with any of our APIs. Once you've done that and logged into your account, you need to navigate to the streaming dashboard. So on the top over here, you'll notice that there is communications and media section, and there's a streaming section. Make sure that you're in the streaming section because the communications and media APIs will not work for these APIs that we're using today. Once we're on this page, you'll notice that we're in the live broadcast section. We'll notice that we don't have any stream tokens, which we will be creating using the API. First, we want to go over to the settings section on the left-hand side over here, where you're going to see an API secret appear with a very long string of a bunch of different uh, letters and numbers going up. This is very important to keep secret, where if you share it, somebody will be able to access and create API requests on your behalf. So just make sure it's only in the hands of people that should have access to the API key. In the chance that somebody does receive access that should not have it, or somebody no longer should have access to your API secret, go over to the edit button on the right over here, where you can go and click on refresh, which will generate a new API secret for you. Keep in mind though that this is going to make any existing applications or programs that you have using your old API secret invalid and you will need to use this new API secret with those. So while we are here, let's make sure that we have this secret copied right now because next we're going to be using Postman. So I highly recommend that you download the Postman desktop application. I've personally found that it works best for this use case, but your mileage may vary. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to be downloading it right now, but it's available for all platforms. But once you have that downloaded, you're going to be able to see that we have already created a workspace for you. At postman.com slash dolby.io, you're going to be able to see that there is a streaming workspace, which we can actually navigate to right now, where they're going to go to postman.com slash dolby.io. There's no dot in this instance. And it's going to pull up our landing page with all the different workspaces that we have, where if we click on the workspaces tab right here, you're going to notice that there is a dolby.io streaming APIs, which is going to bring you right to that page that we were just on. I already have it open in the Postman desktop app, so I'm going to switch to that right now. And you're going to be able to see just a nice little overview about what's going on, shows you all the different APIs, and we're going to be in the Collections tab on the left over here. Before we go into any of the collections we're going to be using, we want to use that API secret that we have already saved. So I'm going to go over to the Environments section on the left over here, and I'm going to click on Streaming API Sample. This is going to contain the URL that all the different API endpoints are accessing, which has already been pre-filled out, but it also contains the API secret variable that we want to paste into the current value column that we have over here. Then I'm going to save it directly. I'm on a Mac, so for me, it's going to be Command S. If you're on a PC, it's going to be Control S, whatever the keyboard save option is for your operating system. And then we have it saved. And it's now going to apply to all the different API requests that you're going to make in this collection. Now we can head back over to the collection section over here at the very top of the left. And because we're going to be working with published tokens right now, we want to click on the published token collection over here. This is going to give us a nice little overview about what's going on with this. And if you want to fork it, you can fork it yourself at the very top over here, where you're going to be able to make any customizations towards it as you want. But for now, we're just going to be working directly in this environment. We want to create a token, which you'll see because it says post next to it. It is the only post request that we have in this entire collection over here. And you're going to see what it is built out of. We have the URL at the very top. We can see it's a post request. It's going to that URL that we've already predefined. 
and it's going to the publish token endpoint. And you've noticed that also all the different parameters, authorization, headers, etc., have all been pre-configured for you. It is already working. The only things that we need to change are inside of the body, where you'll see that we have variables for label and stream name that we need to fix. There's a couple other ones in here that are all labeled as false. You can leave those as is right now. We'll talk about those a little bit later. To fill in these variables, you can either, as I mentioned before, fork it and just manually change those in there, or we can go back over to the publish token main section over here. And under fork, you'll notice that there is a variable section over here. If we click on that, you'll notice that we have label and stream name already populated over here, and they just need a current value put into it. So I'm just gonna name these something arbitrary like video and video stream and save once again using the keyboard command, where if we go back over to the create token endpoint, all I need to do now is click on the big blue send button on the top right over here, and you'll see that we have a success. You'll see that there has a body with the status of success and a couple of other information endpoints with the JSON information that can tell you a little bit more information if you know what you're looking at. But all we need to do right now is just confirm that it actually worked. So I'm going to go back over to my web browser and I'm going to go back over to the Dolby dashboard that we have over here. And I'm going to click on live broadcast once again to get over there. And where it used to be empty, you'll now see that there is a video stream token we have over here that points to the stream video stream, all working exactly as we intended. So if you do want to use other API endpoints, as I did mention before, or if you want to add some additional parameters to customize what's going on directly in the token that we just created, I'm going to direct you over to our documentation website at docs.dolby.io, which you'll see has all the different APIs we have. The ones that we're looking at today are in the streaming API section, where if you go over there and then click on API reference, you're going to see a list of all the different endpoints that we have, very similar to how we had them laid out in our Postman collection. We can go over to the publish token section, and once again over here, we can go over to create token, and you're going to see exactly how it's built, what all the different parameters mean, and any optional ones that you might want to add yourself if you want to add those all in, and we can even look at what one of the sample responses look like. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn something today. My name is Griffin once again. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to the support team. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.